it's going very slow, sorry. It takes a lot of strain. Okay. Well, I'm live with Dr. Jason Fung. And I'll tell you, give us a round of applause because, or the team, not me, <laughs> because they pulled off the Zoom with the split screen, which evidently is far more, um, well, predictable, I should say, than the old split screen. Jason, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hey. You're busy. You. You're in your car and you're still making this happen for us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have my son's hockey game in a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that. So we won't we won't keep you long. But hey Jason, you remember how we struggled with the split screen and there's Jason uh, and I both have, we're both afraid of technology and we both assume it's not going to work. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> when it's work, it's fantastic, right? But when it doesn't, it's like, oh. <laughs> oh, believe me, I've had more fails than you can even count. But uh, anyways, hey, listen, I, I want you to bring, uh, let's talk about, you know, fasting around metabolic issues, right? Because this is massive epidemic. And you're going to be discussing this, obviously, in more detail um, at the seminar. Again, that's November 2nd to 9th, or 2nd to the 4th practitioners who are watching. But let, let's talk about it. Because you know, you would agree with myself and our group of doctors that we would never be able to touch these conditions. I mean, even some of the weight loss resistance stuff, let alone diabetes and thyroid, if it wasn't for fasting. And this has been your experience in your new book is the, the, the uh, fat of uh, the diabetes code. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is the thing is that we uh, like, so what I've done is I've treated sort of the most severe uh, patients, the ones with metabolic syndrome, the ones who really have struggled with their weight, but more than just weight, it's um, the, a, a huge health issue because type 2 diabetes increases your risk and metabolic syndrome of, of heart attacks and cancer and stroke and heart disease, and, you know, kidney disease and blindness and amputation. So all this sort of stuff. And they're really the most severe cases, but they're the highest risk people. So as, as a physician, those are the people we really need to treat. And unfortunately, those are the people that aren't really being treated. And they generally need a much more intensive sort of thing. So while you can do well if you know, you're, you're, you're not as severe, you know, fasting is sort of the ultimate in terms of um, weight loss because you really are eating nothing. So it's impossible to go lower than zero. And the, the funny part about it is that if you look at studies on bariatric surgery. So these are surgeries where they cut people's stomach so that they can't eat. And then they rewire their intestines to so whatever they do eat, they don't absorb into the body. It's like, okay, so all this expensive surgery and very invasive and so on, also that people can get zero calories, zero food into their bodies. Well, why don't you simply not eat? Right? It's exactly the same. And, and in these studies of bariatric surgery, you see fantastic benefits. I mean, we know that they have benefits because these people are simply living off their own fat and doing fantastically well. But why do, why do we need surgery to do that? Why can't we just decide to do that? It's like not easy, but neither is getting a surgery, right? So and it's so expensive, ten, twenty thousand dollars, and you know, ongoing, um, you know, doctors' visits and all this stuff for something that actually is completely free. And this is the thing. So when you treat these very intensive patients, that's when you get a sense of what is going to work and what's not going to work. Because if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And then you can apply it to less severe cases. So people who just want to lose a few pounds. So just the other day, I was reading uh, somebody had sent to me in the Hollywood Reporter, how all these celebrities are going crazy for intermittent fasting. And I'm thinking, I think these celebrities have always done intermittent fasting, but have never sort of admitted it because they didn't want to be labeled anorectic. And now that it's out in the open, I'm like, yeah, they're all saying, yeah, we do it. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure you've always been doing it because that's a situation where looks are your business. So therefore you have to do what it takes to look good. And I always think that jokes on them, it's actually really healthy for you too. So it's, it's uh, sort of one of these strategies that can take care of the, 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 the sickest of the sick. So therefore, when you apply it in, in not so tough a situation, it's going to work for you too. Yeah, you know, I, I, I have a saying, don't eat less, eat less often, because many people, and we're talking about Hollywood, they try to calorically restrict. Eventually, the metabolism goes down, 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 down until, you know, it doesn't matter what you eat. But 
intermittent fasting, right? When you don't eat and then you eat, and when you eat, eat to full. So if you're not gonna eat for five days, and then you know eventually you start eating it, really that's the key to living longer. And obviously we're allowing our body to start getting in the habit of feeding from itself. You know, you have a unique way of describing the epidemic of diabetes as far as you know what's going on. And this is really why fasting works so well for it. It's because you talk about the glucose, right? It, it really doesn't have anywhere else to go. It starts building up in the body. Explain your theory on diabetes. And it's really just a unique explanation. We lost. Sorry. Them. Oh, there yeah, you I are. think. Good. Yeah. You're back. Did you hear what <laughs> Sorry I about that? That's all uh, right. No, I, I only caught the first bit about it. Okay. So basically, it's this you have a very unique explanation of diabetes as far as how the glucose builds up in the body, right? Because literally your body cannot stuff it anywhere else. And of course, that's why it causes damage. And this is why fasting works so well for diabetes. Explain that theory. And I think people have a better understanding of why fasting is so effective. Yeah. And I think it's really critical because it gets to what insulin resistance really is because insulin resistance is this sort of nebulous term. And what it means is that insulin levels are very high, so they should shove all the blood glucose into the cells, but it doesn't. The blood glucose is high and yet insulin is high as well. So they, therefore they say, well, insulin is not really doing its job. So therefore the cell is insulin resistant. And there's two ways that the cell can actually be insulin resistant. Either there's some kind of blockage so that the glucose can't get into the cell. So inside the cell, there's not enough glucose. So it's, it's called internal starvation. And this is what you see in untreated type 1 diabetes. So these people get skeletally thin. They don't have insulin, so therefore the glucose can't get into the cell. The cell has no energy, and basically they starve. So no matter what they eat, they will starve to death. And this is what happened to kids in the 1910s and so on. When they discovered insulin in 1921, they were able to sort of get past that. So therefore they actually got better when they gave them insulin because insulin was too low. But this is not the situation that we see right now. In type two diabetes, we have too much insulin, but there's two ways. It can not get into the cell, but the other way that insulin can be blocked, that is the cell can be insulin resistant, is that the cell can be overfilled. So it can be underfilled or it can be overflowing. If it's overflowing, the reason that insulin isn't working is because it's trying to shove glucose into a cell that has too much glucose. And it's a very conceptually easy way to think about it because therefore, if that's the case, then the cell is not starving. The cell is too full. And that's exactly what you see. We see big fatty livers, big fatty pancreases, abdominal obesity. These people are not starving. So to say that a cell is internally starving is... Yeah. I mean, this is America. Even the people that aren't diagnosed right now, this is you folks. Listen up. Say, well, I don't have diabetes. No, no. This is still happening to you. So keep going, Jason. This is almost 50% of the American adult population, which is scary because it sets you up for tremendous health problems. And so if you understand that really the problem of insulin resistance, which is type 2 diabetes, is the same thing, is too much glucose in the cell, then, well, just let your body burn it off. And that's really as simple as that. And it's natural. It's the reason why we carry body fat. And there's no other reason, sorry, um, that there's no reason why we can't do it. And, and this is the thing. If you, for example, have a car and you fill up on gas, so your, your gas tank is full, but you still have to pump in some gas. And so you have nowhere to put it. So you pump it into the back and your car smells, right? Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what you wouldn't do. You wouldn't go to the gas station three times a day, never mind six times a day, and start pumping gas into your back seat. So if you have too much glucose, why are you eating six times a day? That doesn't make any sense. What you're going to do is, one, stop going to the gas station, and two, drive that car around until you burn off all the gas. And that's what fasting is. You're letting your body burn off all that sugar. And now we have a natural free solution to this huge epidemic of type 2 diabetes, which by itself is going to cause heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, blindness, mutation. And if you think that fasting is no fun, you're right. But try going blind and being on dialysis. Like that's no fun. 
And there will be nothing you can do at that point. And that's the sad part. And, and people all, you know, some people still come to me and they say, why didn't anybody tell me about this five years ago? I'm like, I don't know. I've been trying to tell people. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it just caught on, man. I, you know how many years I've been teaching <laughs> fasting? It just now caught on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, listen, I think that's a great explanation, and uh, I'll let you get to your uh, your, your kid's uh, hockey game. But, you know, that is a great explanation. And obviously, at the seminar, you're going to go into great detail because, you know, we're, we're, we're using very similar um, protocols around fasting. I mean, not just five-day fasting, but even throwing in fasts in the week. And, you know, you and I have discussed these types of fasts. We're both going to be talking about these strategies around this metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and I mean, all of it. So um, can't wait to see you at the seminar. And for those yeah. watching, see, uh, see Dr. Jason, November 2nd through the 4th in Las Vegas. Yeah, thanks very much. It's going to be great. I'm, uh, we're going to go into like physiology and what happens in the body so that people really understand what the body does during the fasting process and really how beneficial it can be in some you know, in cases, and this is the whole point, you know, discussing how we can use it as a therapeutic strategy. I mean, why not? Like, I, I just don't understand why we can't do it, right? It's a, it's a tool that we can use and to not use it is, is just crazy. No, it, nothing works like it for what's happening in the epidemic today. You know, yeah. honestly, nothing works like it. And that's why I'm excited to get more and more doctors at our seminar and train more and more. And uh, thank you for being on our team. Uh, you've been such a blessing you know, to our growing group of doctors. So thanks, Dr. Jason. Appreciate you coming on. So, and thank you all. And I'll see you tomorrow night, six o'clock mountain time. And you're going to learn the safe way to break a fast. All right, Dr. Jason. All right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah.